every single pistol slash handgun in Treyarch's Call of Duty Zombies. Let's go. Let's start this video off in a World of War and start with the classic Colt M1911, the designated starting pistol for majority of zombie maps. Now when you think the weakest weapon in zombies, you probably think of like the Springfield or the Shiva, but actually the starting pistol is majority of the time the weakest weapon. Taking multiple shots on round one just to kill a zombie, that's not what it's used for. It's used to help you get some points until you can buy an actual good gun like the Springfield for example. But if you have managed to hold on to the 1911 for a long enough time to where you can actually get to pack punch, it is going to upgrade to the C3000 Biatches and it's going to get a major damage increase while also taking a huge hit to the fire rate and the amount of ammo this thing holds. And that is for a very, very good reason, because instead of shooting lame old bullets, who wants to do that? Now you're shooting explosives and I mean like badass huge explosions. And running around with a explosive delivery device the size of a pistol in a zombies game is always going to be fun. The only downside to the C3000 Biatches is one, you're playing all in World of War Darius. You don't really have too many open areas to just freely use this thing like you would in a lot of other zombie maps. So it can be very, very dangerous, especially since PhD Flopper hadn't been invented yet. And the amount of damage it does do is pretty significant, but when it comes to how dangerous this thing is and how much ammo it holds, and the fact that you have to hold on to the 1911 until you can pack punch it, in my opinion, it just doesn't seem worth it when there are plenty of other weapons both in the box and on the wall that are going to outperform this at just every turn. So as much as I love the C3000 Biatches and the precedent it's set with upgrading the starting pistol, I do have to admit that it's not as good as we thought it was back in the day. Now, quick side note real quick, there is no sponsor for today's video, so make sure you guys check out Gamersubs using my link down below and use code CRAZY to save some money. Black Friday is coming up with Christmas right around the corner. They make for excellent gifts, or if you're selfish like me, you can buy yourself whatever you want. So again, check out that link down there below in the description. Back to the video. Now, moving on to the next pistol we had in World of War, that is going to be the 357 Magnum. And the 357 Magnum, unupgraded wise, is going to have a damage output very, very similar to the C3000 Biatches. But it does not do explosive damage, so it's not going to be able to hit a bunch of zombies at once. It's mainly going to focus on like one or two. But still, the 357 Magnum is very, very powerful and it's going to be a one shot for a pretty long time. And once you upgrade it, it's going to get a little bit of a damage increase, mainly when it comes to headshots. That is where you will see the most drastic change when it comes to damage output. Because the overall base damage that this thing does when you upgrade it relatively stays the same. But when it comes to your head and chest multipliers, those are going to increase. The fire rate is going to stay the same and the amount of ammo that it holds will also stay the same. So other than the fact that it does a little bit more damage at longer ranges and just a tad more damage to the head and the chest, the 357 Magnum once upgraded to the 357 plus I kill you relatively stays the same. Not too much really changes once you upgrade this. And that seemed to be a very, very common theme with a lot of World of War weapons. It seems like they didn't really have the upgrading process figured out yet, which in the coming zombie games, they definitely figured it out. But in World of War Darius, it really did seem like a trial phase, just trying to figure out how they wanted to approach this. But still, the 357 Magnum is a very, very powerful weapon, and I definitely think it is widely slept on by a lot of zombie players. Sure, without double tap or speed cola, the fire rate and the reload speed are very, very slow and a pain in the ass. But still, I think the amount of damage that this thing can throw out is definitely worth it, in my opinion. Do not pray for easy lives, my friends. Pray to be stronger men. So now let's move on to Black Ops 1. And with Black Ops 1, we saw a little bit more when it came to the pistol department. The 1911 got a huge upgrade. Once you upgrade the 1911 in Black Ops 1, instead of getting the C3000 Biatches, you now get Mustang and Sally. And not only do you get the major damage increase, you also get another gun. You went from 1 to 2. Explain that one, Atheist. I don't think you can. Your fire rate and your ammo are going to take a huge decrease, but you're shooting boom booms. You have two guns that do more damage than the World of War one. And if you're not playing on 5 or Kino Der Toten, you have the access of PhD Flopper, and Mustang and Sally and PhD Flopper make for one of the greatest combos in all of Call of Duty Zombies history. And even on high rounds, Mustang and Sally are still a viable option, being able to take out a couple hordes of zombies with, I don't want to say ease, but relative ease. So I definitely think Treyarch did a fantastic job with the Black Ops 1 1911 because Mustang and Sally is one of the most iconic weapons in zombies. 
The next pistol we had in Black Ops 1 is the CZ-75. The CZ-75, in my opinion, is just more of a fodder gun for the box. It's just there to make sure you don't get all the good weapons because it's not really that powerful. It's a mainly a point weapon. Y you get it from the box and you use it to get points until you can get something you actually want. But say you actually hold on to it and you upgrade it, you're going to get Calamity. The damage that this thing puts out is going to double. It's going to go from semi-automatic to automatic. Its fire rate will take a decrease, but the amount of ammo this thing does hold is going to increase. And for how much damage this thing puts out and how much ammo it has, it's just really not even worth it. I would much rather have the CZ-75 dual wheel. Because what is better than one gun? Two guns, always. I feel like dual wield weapons are really slept on in zombies because I think you make any weapon dual wield and it automatically becomes infinitely better. Once you upgrade the CZ-75 dual wields, it becomes Calamity and Jane. The damage is going to double. It's gonna go from semi to fully automatic. The rate of fire will take a decrease, but it will get more ammo. Now each individual gun has the same stats as the single version, so really not much changes there, but you, you just get another gun. That's really all that's happening. You're just getting a second gun to help you out and getting more ammo. So there's no reason to upgrade the singular CZ-75 when you can get the dual wield version and it'd be infinitely better. And this is another gun that I think is widely slept on in the zombies community because I really do think Calamity and Jane is a pretty decent weapon and it's going to be able to carry you for a long time. Now again, remember, this is a long time in Black Ops 1, so... I'm not talking like 40s, 50s, I'm talking like 20s, 30s. The last pistol that we had in Black Ops 1 is going to be the Python. Now this is going to kind of mirror the 357 Magnum because all the stats that it has are oddly similar to that. So once you upgrade the Python to the Cobra, the damage that it puts out is going to be pretty much on par with the 357 Magnum. Its fire rate is going to stay the same, but once you upgrade it, its magazine and the overall ammo that it has will increase and you will also get the speed loader making you reload infinitely faster and he topped that up with like speed cola this thing is like lightning mcqueen dude you can't even see it lightning mcqueen here Me. Wow. and i really love the python like if i can't get the ray gun or something and i can get the python from the box and i need something powerful to carry me for a little bit this is an excellent option. It puts out a lot of damage it's insanely fast and it holds a lot of ammo i know i kind of keep saying the same thing but I think this is definitely slept on as well. Like, sure, it's not good for points or anything, but if, like, you're struggling to get the Wonder Weapon from the box and you're already in, like, the 15s and 20s and you just need something that kills fast, this is an excellent option until you can get, like, the Ray Gun or the Thunder Gun or whatever map you're on. So if you haven't really played too much with the pistols in Black Ops 1, go back and give the Python and the dual wield CZ-75s a try. I think you will be slightly surprised with how good these things actually were. Because I feel like everyone just used the Galil, the Commando, the RPK, and a lot of y'all really did sleep on these pistols. Moving on to Black Ops 2, we got the M1911, and I'll make this quick because we've talked about it a lot, and this version of the 1911 is very, very similar to the Black Ops 1 version. Once upgraded, becomes the Mustang and Sally. The reason a lot of people probably never got this in Black Ops 2 compared to the Black Ops 1 version is PhD Flopper. Sure, you had the Perma Perk and you had it on Origins, but the Perma Perk isn't permanent and Origins never had the 1911. So Mustang and Sally and Black Ops 2 really never saw its time in the limelight like it did in Black Ops 1. Even though it still is just as effective, you don't have that buffer between you and killing yourself with an explosive. So a lot of people tended to go to other weapons, especially with the introduction of Double Tap 2.0. Now, one of the other starting pistols that we had is the Mauser C96. On upgraded wise, it's going to be any regular old starting pistol. Very, very weak, multiple shots on round one, but it looks extremely badass, and I have one in real life, and I absolutely love it. But once upgraded, it becomes one of the greatest weapons in Zombies history that is not a wonder weapon. It becomes the Boom Hilda. And this thing is insane. Its damage is going to get a huge increase. Its fire rate will take a little bit of a decrease, but the overall ammo this thing has is going to increase for once. We haven't really seen that with a starting pistol and that's very, very rare. But once upgraded to the Boom Hilda, the headshot multiplier that this thing has and just the overall damage that this thing can put out is literally insane. I like to refer to this as like the Raygun Mark II's baby brother because that's kind of what it behaves like. And it kind of is a wall weapon in a weird way because you can just keep going after dig piles and eventually you might get yourself another Mauser C96 and boom, 
magically you have more ammo. Well, you still have to go like pack a bunch of but don't worry about it. And in my opinion, this is definitely one of the best versions of the upgraded starting pistol that we have seen in zombies to date. I mean, hell, even on round 50, this thing can still put in a lot of work. So what's there not to love about it? Now, one of my all time favorite pistols that we have ever seen in zombies is going to be the Remington New Model Army, which is only available on Buried. And that is just such a huge shame. I absolutely love the design, love the looks, love the feel. Dude, what's there not to love about cowboy guns? It's awesome. But once upgraded to the Sassafras, this thing is going to behave very similar to the Black Ops 2, the Black Ops 1 Python, and the 357 Magnum from World of War. Upgraded, you're going to get a little bit of a damage increase. You're going to get the fire rate staying the exact same, but the overall ammo that you hold will increase. And really, there's not too many differences between this and the Python, because if you put this in the fridge and buried, and say you go to transit and you try to get the Remington out, it's actually just going to give you the Python instead. And speaking of the Python, that also made a return in Black Ops 2, and all of its stats are going to be very, very similar to the Remington New Model Army. I mean, hell, even down to the amount of ammo and its fire rate once upgraded are literally the exact same. And these two weapons are insanely powerful, and once you add on Double Tap 2.0, are incredible guns and can carry you a lot longer than majority of weapons we have seen so far. But I mean, goddamn, that Remington New Model Army is beautiful. Now we have seen a lot of good weapons so far, so let's talk about some of the bad ones. Let's talk about the Cap 40. A fully automatic pistol with a 12 round magazine is kind of mid, in my opinion, just a little mid. It's one of those weapons like the CZ-75 where it's kind of just in the box to make sure you don't always get good stuff. But once you upgrade to the Karmic Atom Perforator 4000, it's going to get a slight damage increase. It's going to stay automatic. The rate of fire is going to stay the same and it will get an ammo increase. And you can also repack bunch it to get the fast mag attachment. So everything about this weapon just screams to me like speed. Like this thing was just built to be fast. It doesn't put out a lot of damage, but it's fire rate, it's reload speed, and the fact that it's a pistol so you can just run around really fast with it. Everything about it just screams really, really fast, but it's not that effective. And especially with that fire rate that it has and only upgrading to a 15 round magazine, you're going to be constantly reloading and it just doesn't carry that much ammo in general. So this is definitely a grab it from the box, get your points back, and then trade it away for something else. The next pistol we have is going to be the B23R. This is really, really popular on transit, mainly because it's the weapon in the bus, and you tend to spend a lot of time in the bus, so you better get pretty familiar with the B23R. But if we actually compare this to a lot of other weapons, it's really not that good. It's a pretty decent point-getting weapon for early rounds, but once you upgrade it to the bear, the B34R, it's going to get a slight damage increase. It's actually going to be pretty much on par with the Cap 40. It's going to go from a three round burst to fully automatic and its overall fire rate will stay the same, but it will get an ammo increase and you can repack punch it to get the fast mags attachment. And this weapon is kind of just similar to the Cap 40. I wouldn't really grab it. Yes, it is a wall weapon, so ammo is going to be a little bit easier to come by. But the amount of damage that the B23R puts out isn't really worth it in my opinion. It's a pretty solid early round weapon, especially on transit, because you can just always readily grab ammo from the bus. But this is definitely not a weapon that I would see myself pack punching that much or if at all. It's pretty strong in the early rounds, but definitely has a huge fall off once you get to the mid to higher rounds. The next pistol we have is going to be the 5.7 and the dual wield 5.7. Let's talk about the regular one first. The unupgraded 5.7 is damage wise very similar to the Cap 40 and the B23R. It's going to be semi automatic and a pretty decent early round point getter. But once you upgrade it to the Ultra, its damage is almost going to double. It's going to stay semi automatic and keep the same fire rate, but it will get a slight increase in ammo. And again, you can always repack punch it to get the fast mags attachment. And I'm not going to lie, the, the 5.7 pack punched Ultra is actually pretty good. In my opinion, it's definitely better than the Cap 40 and the B23R. And on Origins, this is actually a wall weapon, so you can always go back and get more ammo. But you know what's better than one pistol? <laughs> Two of them, because the dual wield 5.7s are infinitely better than just the regular 5.7. But once upgraded to Ultra and Violet, its damage is again almost going to double. Its fire rate is going to stay the same, but it will get some more ammo. And Ultra and Violet are very similar to Calamity and Jane from Black Ops 1. They're very, very slept on. They're pretty decent. The only complaint that I have with them is the amount of ammo that they hold. Not really a lot. It's enough to warrant getting them, but I could definitely do with a little bit more ammo. And because just one weapon does a pretty decent amount of damage, now that you have two, you have dual wield, 
it's going to do even more damage. And then you stack up Double Tap 2.0 on top of that. Ultra and Violet make for a very, very solid weapon to carry you through those mid rounds. And I would definitely get the Dual Wield 5.7 well before I'd get the Cap 40 or the B23R. Now the final pistol that we saw in Black Ops 2 is going to be the Executioner. This pistol shotgun hybrid is one of the best weapons in the game. The only complaint that I have with it is that reload animation. You just like put the shells in there and they just like disappear off the Narnia or something. <laughs> Pretty funny. But the Executioner on upgraded wise is better than majority of the other pistols, but it's going to be on the slower side. But once upgraded to the Voice of Justice, you're going to get a major damage increase. The fire rate is going to stay the same. The magazine size will also stay the same, but the overall ammo that you can hold will definitely increase. And you can also repack punch it to get the best attachment, the long barrel. And the Voice of Justice is incredibly powerful and definitely one of the best pistols in the game, being able to one shot well up into the mid 30s. And before the Raygun Mark II was ever a thing in Zombies, this was my go-to in Nuketown. This is what carried me to round 50 on Nuketown because it was just so powerful. And honestly, I'd put the Executioner up there in a class with like the Mauser C96. That's how good and that's how powerful this weapon actually is. It's just a shame that the Executioner was on every single map in Black Ops 2 except Origins. The one map that I think really could have benefited from the Executioner to help take out those Panzers didn't have it and that's just a shame jumping into black ops 3 we have a wide variety of starting pistols we got the 1911 which was introduced in zombie chronicles and when upgraded it becomes mustang and sally not much really changes there i mean you do have the gobble gum that's kind of like phd so you can't always run with that which would make mustang and sally pretty viable but it's still just not the same as Mustang and Sally and PhD Flopper. It just doesn't capture the OG greatness of that combo. And we also have the MR6, which is literally just copy paste M1911. Or the 1911 I guess, came after the MR6 in Black Ops 3. So the M1911 would be a copy paste MR6. But once upgraded, it becomes Death and Taxes and behaves very similar to Mustang and Sally. And again, no PhD Flopper. I'm a boomer. I'm going to cry. That hurts my feelings. But where we do differ when it comes to explosive upgrades is going to be the Bloodhound. On upgraded wise, the Bloodhound is going to be stronger than the 1911 and the MR6. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be as strong as the Springfield because that's a pretty high bar, but it will be stronger than the other two starting pistols. And if you can manage to hold on to it long enough, you're going to upgrade to the Meat Wagon, Meat Wagon 22. And it will do a little bit more damage than Mustang and Sally, and also carry a little bit more ammo than Mustang and Sally and Death and Taxes. Not by a lot, but it carries just a tad bit more, so I guess it counts. But still, without PhD Flopper or the Gobblegum Danger Closest, it's really not worth it in my opinion. It's just too dangerous to be firing this thing around, especially if you're in like a tight corridors. You're really gonna down yourself pretty quick with this, so I would really rather have a lot of other weapons in the game than two explosive pistols that I'm probably going to kill myself with. Now the other starting pistol that we had is the Mauser C96, which was brought back for the Black Ops 3 Origins map. On upgraded wise, your standard starting room pistol, but once you upgrade it, it becomes the Boomhilda again, but gets a major damage increase. This thing is insane. Way more powerful than the Black Ops 2 version and God damn, this thing is like a mini wonder weapon. It deserves a class of its own. That's how good the Boom Hilda is. I think out of every starting pistol that we have ever seen, the Boom Hilda might be the best. The amount of damage that this thing is still able to put out on like round 50 is absolutely incredible and really makes you like not want to get a lot of other weapons. Like honestly, sometimes I'd rather have the Boom Hilda than the Ray Gun Mark II because I can just go redig a dick pile and get another Mauser and just go have fun with that. Now the last starting pistol that we have is going to be the RK5. Now you can only use this as a starting pistol by completing every easter egg in the game and getting the achievement a better tomorrow on revelations. After you have done that, the RK5 becomes a starting weapon. And unupgraded wise, I guess this technically would be the most powerful starting weapon because it will do double the damage of the Bloodhound. And be a three round burst with carrying more ammo, I guess technically unupgraded wise this is one of the best starting weapons. Now, if you held on to it long enough and you get it upgraded, you're going to get the Rex Caliber 115, and its damage is going to triple with a pretty decent headshot multiplier. It will stay a three round burst with having the same fire rate, and it will get a magazine and ammo increase. Now, my only real complaint about this is the amount of ammo it does hold 
Yes, it is a wall weapon, and it's one of the earliest wall weapons, so it's going to be pretty cheap. But still, fresh out of Pack-A-Punch, it's only going to carry 30 in the mag and 180 in stock. That's not a lot, especially with that fire rate. You're going to go through ammo pretty quick. It is a fantastic up-close weapon, especially when it comes to headshots, but you're going to run through ammo so fast that I would rather have a couple other weapons than this, to be honest. And speaking of mid, we got the LKAR-9. Damage-wise, it's going to be a little bit more powerful than the RK-5. It will also be a wall weapon, so ammo is readily available. But once you upgrade it, its damage will get an increase, its fire rate is going to stay the same, and its magazine size and overall ammo will increase. But not by a lot. And that's where my main complaint with the LKAR-9 comes from. This thing is a very powerful headshot machine, with damage coming close to the ICR, but it runs through ammo so fast that you just don't even want it at that point. And that's really just my main complaint with this and the RK-5. They're both very powerful weapons and have some insane headshot multipliers, but you're going to run through ammo just way too quick, especially with those fire rates. It just makes me want to stay away from them because I don't want to have to run back and keep rebuying ammo. Now, one of the best pistols that we saw in Black Ops 3 were only available on Zets of Onoshima, and that is the Marshall 16s. The amount of damage that these things can put out on upgraded wise is insane. The only problem is you're going to be reloading a lot. And without Speed Cola, it's going to be a little, little pain in the ass. But once upgraded to the Perun and Veles, you're going to get that damage increase and you're also going to get that ammo increase. And these things are going to put out so much damage that they're going to be a one shot for a pretty long time. And honestly, I really do wish the Marshall 16s were on more maps because they are so useful, especially when it comes to boss zombies. Like they're so helpful against like the Spore Thresh Shrek looking motherfuckers in Zetsubodoshima that whenever I have the Marshall 16s, I really don't even have to worry about those guys because they just absolutely delete them. The only real complaint is that you have to be close to the zombies because if you're anywhere past the point of close they're not going to do anything it's like hitting them with a wet noodle so you definitely have to have all the zombies pretty close to you but once you get like your setup with double tap and speed cola these things are definitely a menace to society and need to be locked up now the last pistol i, I guess quote unquote pistol that we had in black ops 3 is going to be the rift e9 which is an energy weapon which is why i don't know if we can classify it as a pistol but fuck it i'm gonna classify it as one and I think the Rift E9 is definitely one of the best pistols we have ever seen. The only complaint that I would really have with it is that unupgraded wise and upgraded wise, it's still a two round burst and has a pretty slow fire rate. Unupgraded wise, the Rift E9 isn't really much like it's decent, but you really want to get it upgraded just as fast as possible because it's just so slow. But once you upgrade it, it's still pretty much as slow, but you get a massive damage increase, which more than makes up for how slow this thing is. So you're going to get a damage increase and an ammo increase. That magazine size is going to go from 12 to 68, which is goddamn. And I think if you're looking at just like the pure number of overall kills, I think the Rift E9 and the Boom Hilda are probably neck and neck. If that's not going to satisfy you, I would probably give the edge to the Rift E9 just because it carries more ammo. I think a lot of people will really did sleep on the Rift E9 and that headshot game that it has going for it because even on round 50, this is a force to be reckoned with and definitely one of the best pistols we have ever seen. But like I said, the only complaint and probably the biggest turnoff is that it's a two round burst and very, very slow. And I don't mean like snail's pace slow, but like compared to a lot of other pistols that we have seen, that, that, that kind of slow. So the next time you decide to hop on to Black Ops 3 and play some Revelations, grab the Rift 9 and play around with it on medium to high rounds, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and just how good this thing actually is. In Black Ops 4, Treyarch decided to change a lot of things up. Mainly the fact that you have to pack a punch multiple times to get the gun to be as best as it can be, and I'm not a fan of that. Just telling me to pack a punch multiple times for no reason other than to make me waste my points on it and not have fun like buying other things kind of sucks. 
but they did also really kind of play around with attachments very similar to black ops 3 so that way attachments are going to be more impactful so now you can really kind of customize the guns to be exactly how you want them to be which would make comparing weapons like this to like earlier games kind of difficult so for black ops 4 and cold war i'm going to speed it up a little bit but we'll start off with the strife or one upgraded to the z harmony and one of my favorite attachments to put on the strife is going to be the knife I love just doing that and then meleeing for a couple rounds because that knife is pretty powerful. And then once I'm done with that, even the unupgraded strife is still pretty powerful. But once like upgraded 100 times to Z Harmony, it's going to be a pretty solid little pistol. Very, very powerful. More powerful than you would think, especially from like a starting pistol. It's definitely not something that I would want to go out of my way to pack a punch. But if I don't really have any other options, I definitely would. But I think the strife is a better unupgraded weapon especially because of that knife, than it is upgrade a weapon, if that makes any sense. Like, I'd rather have the unupgraded version to start a game and then, like, swap it out to get something I actually want instead of, like, starting with a different pistol and then buying the Strife to upgrade it. Like, I just don't see the point in upgrading it when there's a lot of other weapons that are going to be better. Also in Black Ops 4, we have the RK-7 Garrison, and this will be a wall weapon and a mystery box weapon. And in my personal opinion, I just never really even touched this, even when you upgrade it to the Rapscallion 3D. It's just that burst that I'm just not a huge fan of. It behaves very similar to the RK-5 from Black Ops 3. And I mean, unupgraded wise, it's a pretty solid weapon to have in the early rounds, but it's just not something that I would ever see myself pack-a-punching. I mean, you can kind of make anything good in this game with the right attachments and getting a double pack-a-punch ability, but for me personally, I just kind of stay clear of the RK-7 at all times. I would rather have the Strife unupgraded than the RK-7 in my opinion. Now, one weapon that I absolutely love is going to be the Mozu. This thing with the right attachments is like a hand cannon. It kind of reminds me of the Executioner in a weird way with just how much power this thing pumps out. I'm not a huge fan of it unupgraded wise. Like, I don't get this thing just to play with it unupgraded. Like, once I get this, I, I want to pack a punch it right away. And once you pack a punch it to the Bella of the Ball, that's when its true potential actually comes out. Once you have the operator mod, that skull splitter, dude, this thing's headshot damage is insane. And half the time, I don't even find myself ADSing with it. I just kind of like hit fire like I'm a cowboy and I'm still managing to get headshots for days. So out of like all the pistols in Black Ops 4, in my opinion, I think the Mozu is definitely my favorite for how I like to play zombies. I just like having my own little personal hand cannon that can just <laughs> demolish any zombie's head that gets near me. Now, it wouldn't be a zombies game if we didn't have a form of Mustang and Sally, and that is going to come from the Welling. The Welling is one of these starting pistols that you can have, and once pack punched, it becomes the King and Country. And once you upgrade it, it will have more ammo than Mustang and Sally, and especially if you put Bandolier Bandit on, but we're not really going to count that. The Welling is a pretty solid weapon, even without anything that would negate like explosive damage. I feel like the explosive radius isn't really that bad against you. It's still a threat that you have to be careful of, but I don't think it's as bad as some of the previous explosive pistols that we have seen. So I would definitely see myself using King and Country a lot more than I would like the Death and Taxes or Meat Wagon or anything like that from Black Ops 3. Now the last pistol that we had in Black Ops 4 is going to be the Cap 45. Now, when I was trying to get this footage, I couldn't remember ever using the Cap 45, and I was just going into it thinking this is going to be a piece of crap because the Cap 40 from Black Ops 2 was absolutely awful, so how is the Cap 45 going to be any different? And I was kind of surprised. It was actually pretty powerful. Once you pack punch it to the I'm Packed, it's going to get that damage increase that it so rightfully deserves and a pretty decent amount of ammo in its magazine and in reserve. I was actually finding myself having a pretty good time with it. It was more powerful than I thought it was. It's by no means like one of the greatest weapons in the game, but coming from using like the RK7 or the Strife Pack Punched, I was pleasantly happy using the Cap 45. It's not something that I would ever purposefully try to get in a game, but if you're doing like a pistols only run or something like that, this is a pretty solid option and it's going to last you a lot longer than you would think. But definitely out of every single pistol we have seen in Black Ops 4, the Mozu is probably my favorite pack a punched and the strife is probably my favorite unpack a punched and it's kind of weird that i love the strife so much unpack a punched but i like never really use it it's just dude that knife attachment that it can get is badass now moving on to cold war every gun in cold war 
has a chance to be really good, mainly because of the perks and their endless effects and the double pack punch abilities. Every gun in this game really has the chance to be good, especially if you have the right attachments. So I just went into the game and whatever the box gave me, that was the attachments that I rolled with. And it seemed to be a lot of pistols or dual wield. And I gotta say, a lot of these pistols were pretty freaking good, especially if you get the dual wield versions. We'll start with the AMP 63. And if you know me, or you've been on this channel for a long time, I love the PM63 from Black Ops 1. It's one of my favorite guns of all time. I don't care what anyone says, Tokyo and Rose is so much fun to use. So when it came back for Cold War, I was pretty surprised, and I immediately had to rush in and play it. And once you upgrade it to Doom and Gloom, and you have it dual wield, it's pretty fun to use. And the distance that these things are actually accurate and can actually kill very surprising you would think like dual wield up close and personal no like i can scope zombies from like halfway across the map with this thing it's absolutely insane and compared to a lot of the other pistols in this game i think the amp 63 might be one of my favorites only if you're using dual wield i really didn't play too much around with the non-dual wield variant because the dual wield one is just so good and speaking of dual wield, we also have the Diamity. I think that's how you pronounce it. Probably not. Which when upgraded becomes Dihelati and Diamori if you have the dual wield ones. And these are very powerful, but they are a burst weapon. And that's kind of what steers me away from them. Not saying that burst weapons can't be good. It's just that burst weapons in me, I I'm just not a huge fan of them. But I will admit that upgraded wise, these things are very, very good. And are going to last you for a pretty long time. But it's just the burst fire rates, man. Never could you really get around to liking them. And it just kind of pushes me away from ever using it. The Magnum also made a return in Cold War. And once upgraded to the Private Eye, it was kind of a disappointment, in my opinion. I thought it would be a lot more powerful than it actually was. I could not seem to get a dual wield version, like, at all. I was thinking that this thing would be like a powerhouse cannon. And it was strong for Cold War standards, but, like, nothing impressive. It didn't stand out to me in any sort of way. It was kind of just existing in the realm of mediocrity. And honestly, it was a real big letdown because I was thinking this thing was going to pump out a lot of damage all at once. Not saying that it's not powerful, but I just went into using it, having my hopes way up high, and I was kind of let down a little bit. But still, if you have the right attachments and you're going for headshots, it's still a really good weapon, just like every gun in Cold War. Every gun has the potential to be great. The next weapon that made a re-return is going to be the 1911. Now, unfortunately, when you upgrade it, you don't get Mustang and Sally. You don't get the boom booms. You just get pain and suffering, and that's how I felt using these pistols. I think these are some of the weaker ones, and they just look absolutely... <laughs> they look so dumb. Like, look at the recoil. It just looks like their heads are bobbing up and down. <laughs> it looks kind of silly, in my opinion, just how they how they move and the recoil they have. That doesn't, like, discredit, like, that these things are decently powerful, but I just think it's silly how they just keep bobbing up and down. But I remember when I first played with the 1911s, I was expecting Mustang and Sally or something cool like that. And all you got was just like a, a stronger pistol version. And I was like, oh, that's a thing. Especially when you get Flopper making a return and not having Mustang and Sally. That's a huge missed opportunity, in my opinion. But I don't see myself ever really running with the 1911s again in this game. They're just not for me. Now, the last pistol that we have which the game classifies as a handgun, so I'm technically going to classify it as a pistol, is going to be the Marshall, this sawed off shotgun. And I think if you unlock it, you can get this thing dual wielded. And unfortunately, I'm a bum and I didn't have that. But I don't even need this thing to be dual wielded to have a lot of fun with it. It pumps out so much power. I was just having a blast running around the map, just turning the zombies into red mist. This thing is amazing. It's a literal hand cannon, just dishing out nothing but power. It's very effective against boss zombies, especially those mimics, when they trick me into thinking I'm going to pick up something cool. And it turns out it's this little fucking psychopath running at me. The Marshall is great, and I think it's probably my second favorite behind the AMP. It's almost tied for first. I'll have to play around with the dual wield variant. But from just using the regular old Marshall and just dishing out a lot of damage all at once, it was very, very fun to play with. But like I said earlier, Cold War kind of made every gun be good in its own way. So you can really customize the guns to how you want to play. So as long as you have the right attachments, you can kind of make anything fit your play style. So in a way, every pistol slash handgun in Cold War is going to be effective.
the last game we're going to be taking a look at is going to be Call of Duty Vanguard. Now, I'm going to do my best to say nice things and nothing negative. Uh, the first pistol we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the Rat. I actually really liked this gun, oddly. It felt a lot like the 5.7. It had a really good fire rate, and it was dealing a pretty decent amount of damage. And it was really just giving me those 5.7 vibes from Black Ops 2. And I actually liked it a lot better than the machine pistol, which I thought I was actually going to really enjoy. The machine pistol, I felt like I was just running through ammo so fast and just reloading way too much that it was really getting on my nerves. It didn't seem like it was putting out as much damage as the rat. And I honestly found myself using the rat way more than I was the machine pistol. The top break was also a pleasant surprise. This thing is a headshot machine. It does a lot of headshot damage. If you're aiming anywhere else, it's kind of useless, but if you're going for headshots, man, it's gonna put in some work. It's gonna do a really good job. But as long as you're aiming for headshots, the top break is actually a pretty good weapon. There's also a 1911, and the 1911 also reminded me of the 5.7. It was behaving very similar to the rat. And honestly, I think out of all the guns I was using so far, I think the 1911 might have been my favorite. There was just something about the way that it felt using it that I just really, really enjoyed it. It wasn't too fast like the machine pistol, but it wasn't like too slow like the top break. It was like a nice medium. It was like right there in the middle, and I really enjoyed that. The last pistol I was able to get is the Clouser, and this one seems like it was in the middle between the top break and the 1911. It wasn't as fast as the 1911, but it wasn't doing as much damage as the top break. And honestly, I don't think I would ever find myself really using the Clouser as much. It's just not for me. I think out of all the pistols that I ended up using, I think the Rat and the 1911 were definitely my favorites. Now, there is another pistol that I wasn't able to get. I don't know if you have to have like a pass or something, but it is the Valley's Revolver. So I went and found a bunch of footage of people using it, and it looks like a really good weapon. It seems like to me it's on the opposite spectrum of the top break. The top break was just like dealing a lot of damage all at once, and this seems to be like a faster version of it. Also, it has the bonus feature of having a pretty solid melee ability. So maybe one day if I ever give Vanguard a try ever again, which will probably be never, maybe I can get this if you're able to get it from the box. I don't know. Maybe you have to buy it. I'm not buying it. But I spent over an hour trying to get it from the box and it just it wasn't happening. So I have no idea. So that is going to be today's video. Before we end off, I want to thank a bunch of beautiful Patreon supporters. We got Brian Hahn, Person Person, Fat Lucky Potato, Icy Storm, B Rad the Man, Giovanni Diaz, Jorge Burgos, Dr. Dopey, May Y'all, G Daddy Smackdown, Forg, Zane Wise, and Mr. Ridgeway. Shout out to my Patreons. They are 10 times better than literally everybody else. So that is the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I didn't want to include Modern Warfare 3 Zombies because it just released and it's not realm based. And I just didn't really think it would fit with this. I barely thought Vanguard would fit with this. So eventually, maybe if they do get round base, we will include it. But if you guys would like to see more videos like this with sniper rifles, shotguns, and things like that, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment. Leaving a comment definitely helps the video out. Make sure to do that. Call me a bald idiot. I don't care. And lastly, just promise me to have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.